What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. You know, we've been talking about DC. We talked the fly. We talked a little bit about Lorton. And you know what? I figured we better bring a honky on this joint right here that was there. He was in Lorton, but um, he wasn't in Lorton as a prisoner. He was actually a, a pipe fitter. He was a maintenance type of dude. But anyway, Kevin, tell the people who you are, where you're from, and let's get into it. Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm from uh, Virginia. I worked at Lorton for um, from 88, February of 88 to March of 2000. 88 to March of 2000. Let me ask you this, right? You get a job at Lorton, you know, first walking in there, what was it like? Was it a shock? Were you like, holy shit, what did I sign up for? Yeah, but as soon as I, you know, I, I didn't really know what to expect, but as soon as I went through the Sally Port, you know, they shake you down and the, and the gate closes behind you. Um, it was awakening. I, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was a rude awakening. Um, you know, but, um, you know, I, some people liked it. I mean, you know, didn't like it or were scared or whatever, but, and I was scared going in for the good little bit. Um, but that wears off some, you know, that wears off some. That's what I want to know. You know, you, you walk in this place, how old were you when you first got a job there? I was about 30, 31, you know, clean shaven and everything. <laughs> like say, call me Opie Taylor. You know, when I came in, I'm like, what, you know? Um, but yeah, it was, I was 30 young. Um, and, um, you know, it was a good job. It was a good paying job. And I said, you know what, let me, let me, let me give it a try. So that's what I did. Going into a prison like that, right? I mean, it's a hostile environment. We'll talk about some of the things that you've seen, some of the things that you experienced, but you're walking into this place and there are days where you're, when you first start your job where you're scared or are, are there ever days where you're like, man, I'm at work watching my back all day. Maybe I better not, man, maybe I should just quit this job. Were there days like that in the beginning? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, it was, uh, some day, a lot of days, um, you know, you don't realize when you go to, into a dorm or a block, it's, it's stressful enough that you have like a steam line leaking, a water line leaking or something like that. But in Occoquan, where I was at for most of my time, there it was all dorm settings. So you got 160 men say, or raising heck, um, you you can't hardly think straight. And man, you better get my heat fixed, and you better get my water fixed, and all of that. It can, it can get on your nerves. You know, definitely get on your nerves. Talk shit back, or just act like you didn't even hear them. Well, when I first went there, I didn't say anything, you know, because I mean, I'm just trying to feel my way. Um, but after you know, after a while, yeah, I, I you know, after a while, I got pretty good at it. You know, so, you know, I, I just, you know, you ad adapted, I guess. You got pretty good at it. So you adapted. Did you ever talk shit back to the prisoners once you got comfortable? They knew you. They liked you. The people that worked for you. All day long. You know what I mean? I, I you know, um, took a, if I don't know if we want to go into this, but took a new pipe fitter into a uh, youth center, figured that they, they had a problem over there, took him over there. And I said, um, so in between the, uh, this was the lockup at, at uh, youth center, took him over there and he's green. You know, I'm just showing him around, figured youth center, that's the craziest place. Took him around, showed him stuff. He said, um, and man, they're letting him have it. You know, I mean, they are letting him have it. I said, look, man, you're going to have to say something. I said, we can't, and they're just trying to get their time off. You know what I mean? They're just trying to, you know, they got nothing else to do. So kind of taught him a lesson too. I said, man, you can't let him get by with that. You know, talking about, we're going to ask you when you come around. And I, was, I told him, I said, well, you better do it good because you know, pancake ain't done until it's flipped. So I'm, I'm going to hit you back. You know, I'm just kidding. But those are the type of things, you know, that I say sounds crazy, but um, you have to, you have to go back at him. You can't just let him, you know, go off on you. And I, you know, I just, I, then I just stopped and I never, I didn't do it anymore. Or feel like the police didn't have control over there? No, they didn't. Um, in my estimation, I mean, I'm just fa thankful that the inmates let me come in every day and let me go home every day because, it, it, you know, and things jumped off sometimes. But, you know, the that's that was the worst part of the job is the police that were there um, and the, the warden and everything else. I mean, it was just tough. Uh, it was crazy. 
uh, you know, like I said, I didn't have too many problems with the inmates after a while. Um, I had some older inmates that kind of per se broke me in, kind of showed me the ropes and, and, and stuff like that. And, um, you know, so I kind of knew what to, you know, they kind of hit me with what was going on. I was thankful for that. So even as a pipe fitter, I mean, really, your what's your job, though? Is it the safety and security of the facility before you're a pipe fitter, or are you just the pipe fitter? Well, that's what they say. You know, that was, you know, because if anything goes down, I'm an officer or something else. Like, you know, that's what they said. But, um, yeah, it's the safety of the facility. And, um, but, you know, I didn't, you know, if something jumped off, you can best, I'm just going to stand against a wall. I ain't, I'm not getting in all, you know, I'm not going to get in all that. So, you know, some of the things that were going on at Lorton, you know, there was a lot of, uh, I can't say the word on YouTube probably, but the big R, we'll call it the big R. A lot of that stuff, a lot of violence. I mean, you ever, were you ever in a block? You ever have to respond? You ever see some things going on there? And if so, what? Yeah, I came out of um, the one thing that I that really affected me. I'd been there for a while. And, you know, one thing about it, Chad, when you, when you get locked up and you, you certainly, you know, but all my senses were, were on point. You know what I mean? I could sense when something was wrong. So anyway, I go into, um, I go in this, it was called six storm and we go in and as I'm going in, I said, damn, something's not right here. Something just, I didn't, I just didn't feel right. There was an officer that was in on the phone and there was an officer all the way at the back of the dorm and three guys were chasing one guy and stabbing him. And they stabbed him till I think the I don't she was either asleep or she was on the phone. But I mean she she just stayed in her office and stayed locked in there. And I'm like, man, it's just to see another human being stabbed, it was terrible. You know, that was terrible. That's the last thing I want to see, you know. Um that was probably for me, that was probably the worst. You know, you you get real complacent and you think, ah, no, it's not gonna happen. It, you know, I'm down, Chad. We had steam tunnels, and a lot of my work was high pressure steam. And I would go down there, lock myself in with either three, four, five of my inmates, and go down there and fix steam leaks. So no radio, no nothing, nothing at all. You just go down, they could care less, you know. So I'd go down there with, you know, have to go down there with them. So, um, you know, that's, that was my job. So that's what I had to do. You know, but you know, a lot of times the dudes that work in these prisons, like the maintenance dudes and stuff like that, they have their crew. Usually they're the only people in the whole jail that ain't disrespectful to, to prisoners, man. I mean, a lot of staff are just nasty, disrespectful. And sometimes, you know, it is what it is. You build a relationship with your guys that work for you. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, Chad, we wasn't supposed to bring in um, cigarettes or, you know what I mean. It's just, there was stipulations, you can't do this and you can't do that. But every time I got paid, probably every two weeks, I tried to, you know, I get a box of cigarettes and try to give it to the guys. Because, I mean, they would do anything. Anything I asked them to do, they would do. Um, I had some real good, real good inmates. A lot of them just wanted to use the excuse just to run around. But you know, some of them really caught on and really, really took off with it. And quite frankly, I had a guy for six years and um, he, I, I cried when the bus came and got him because I mean, literally other than to get down, like in the steam tunnels and cut off the steam, he could do everything. He could fix sleeve radiators, put traps. I mean, he could do everything. So um, yeah, but, but for the most part, I mean, I mean, we, we, we get them to get, get together for Christmas get them some chicken, cigarettes, you know, as long as you were fair with everybody, there wasn't any, you know, wasn't any problem. So, you know, I think a lot of them didn't want to lose that. And they come down the shop and we joke and stuff like that. So I, you know, like I say, I didn't care myself. Like I'm no tough guy. I'm none of that or anything else like that. So what is, what is it that you said? You, if, if, if you perceive it, you better be it or something like that. And I wasn't, you know, I don't know if that's the word, but, um, you know, I wasn't no tough guy or nothing like that. So it's a regular dude working at a dangerous prison. That's all I was doing, you know, and it was all, you know, 90, 98% was all African-American that was inmates and, and mostly staff too. So, 
you know, you, you, you better, you know, you better get along, you know, you don't come in with that. They're going to show you, they'll show you. So, you know, I, I didn't, like I say, I didn't have the tough guy image or nothing like that. Other than that guy getting, you know, hit up. I mean, what else did you see there that was maybe shocking to you being just, you're not a cop. You're really, you're not, you're, you're a maintenance type of guy. You're walking in here. What's some of the craziest shit that you've seen besides that stabbing? Um, I seen, I, I, I don't know if this will classify that and my mind kind of went blank, but I, um, I went into the dorm and, um, I had an inmate that worked for me really good. It was a, he was a union pipe, uh, pipe insulator. So I went into the dorm and I see these two guys in the, in the uh, shower with a locker. Well, they done took his locker and busting his lock off. He's a thin guy, you know, good guy though. Um, and just basically taking his stuff. Um, you know, I went into the dorm. I went into, I think it was two dorm. And right before I went in there, apparently three, one, the uh, a black women officer was in there. She's the officer of the dorm sitting in the office. And there were about three or four inmates there and they just about had her shirt off. She was sound asleep and they just about had her shirt off. Yeah. I'm like, what the heck? Um, just, I mean, we had, I mean, you're, you're, you're the maintenance dude, but you intervene like, Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, I'm, it ain't, it ain't my, I'm sorry that, you know, you, I'm not getting in that, you know, I've had, um, you know, I've had guys call me and say, Kevin, you know, I need you to come up here. I said, why do you need me to come up there? I said, this, this is like reset the toilet or something like that. He calls me again and says, I need you to come up here. I said, for what? So finally he says, just come up. Well, there was a shank underneath the toilet and he didn't want to get caught with the shank. So he was safe for me to come up there, you know, and get it. There's a lot of other stuff, Chad, it just some stuff slipped my mind, but I, I, I've seen, um, it just, some, it was great. Chad, I went, I got a call. I got a call one day and, and, um, they said, Kevin, we need to go up and check the towers of water leak. I said, okay, you know, I'll go up and check it. So what happened is a prisoner tried to escape and there was like, a tower and then another tower. Well, what happened was the guy was going over the fence and the one tower cut the light on and shot, shot at him. Well, it woke the other tower up and he blew the toilet off the floor. <laughs> I said, God damn. Um, was, we went to it. We had shakedown trailers. And if I'm getting winded, Chad, let me know. But I'm just, these are things that are coming in my mind. You're fine. You're fine. Okay. So, we had a, a shakedown trailers as they come in this institution visitors. So this trail had a frozen water line and I got called in on overtime. They said, Kevin, we need you to check this out. So I go over, well, a woman's in there. And I said, ma'am, you know, this bathroom is out of order. You can't, uh, you can't use it. She said, Oh, I got to go. I said, well, ma'am, you can't use it, please. I said, you know, we got to, you know, I, I can't have you in here. She said, I got to use it. I said, well, go to the other one. I said, we had two trailers there. I go back through the gate to get some tools, come back. She goes to the bathroom on top of the toilet. And I figured she did that because she had drugs or something. I don't know what the, what her, uh, why she would do it, but that's the only thing I could think of. So I just closed the trailer down, locked it up, you know, and, uh, that was it. Uh, I don't know that that was some pretty crazy stuff, you know, did um, you, you said something about the staff, right? Earlier, you said the staff is what the problem was. What was the problem with the staff? Was it, you know, they just didn't give a shit. They were bringing in drugs. They created a dangerous environment. What was it? I think it was probably all of that, Chad. And a lot of it was, um, a lot of it is they had um, the uncles, the aunts, you know, they knew people. Um, you know, there were relatives there and stuff. I just, you know, it, it was just... Um, some of them were cool, you know, some of them were all right, but some of them, you know, if anything was to go down, I wouldn't want them on my back because they don't have me. You know, I knew that they didn't have me. If I can, Chad, I'll tell you, he, here's one of the reasons why I couldn't stand the staff. You come in through a sally port, it was called Six Tired Occoquan. 
there's a car, and this might be a long story, but there's a car outside there with a flat tire. I yell up to the tower. I tell the gate, I said, look, I've got a jack in my car. If you want me to help, you know, fix the tire. Nobody does nothing. Nobody says anything. All that time, nobody, the car's sitting there and I'm thinking, what the heck? There was an escape uh, one night in 93. And what happened is there was a, a wreck tray, a wreck office that had a water cool over a manhole and the manhole went down went into the tunnel and was headed out to the street. It had one gate to get through and that was the getaway car. So anyway, that was, you know, they found tools down there. All my tools are accounted for. I have a shadow board and, and several, several pipe fitters do there. So anyway, long story short, they, they, uh, they, I get up after 45 days, which they had 45 days to report, you know, to write me up for it. They write me up after 45 days and say, me and another guy that was there were responsible. They were our tools. And they weren't our tools. They were a group tools. If we had a water main break, there was a, a digging bar, a few things. It was a multicolored tool. And I'm thinking, they're not even my tools. And they filed a chat again after 45 days. So what they did is just slander me and this other guy's name. And uh, that really, that really got to me because, you know, I went outside, I went on an outside, got an outside lawyer and that kind of thing. If they did, they, they filed it under chapter 16, which was to fire me. So me and this other guy, but uh, it wasn't, they did finally, after they you know, slandered my name all over the place, they did come back with saying my director and stuff said, you know, they had nothing to do with it. It wasn't their tools. But I was still pissed off because they slandered, you know, the the officers, the uh, warden there slandered mine and this other gentleman's name. So oh. that oh, yeah. was. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that was probably one of the worst days because I mean, to say I would give them cigarettes or candy or something like that, yeah, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of that. But I'm not doing no dumb shit like that. I'm just, you know, I'm not, and it, you know, hurt my heart. You know, hurt my heart. So were the cops over there beating up prisoners at all? Was any of that stuff going on over there? Yeah. If, um, if you, if you, if you came at an officer or jumped on an officer or something like that, they take you at Occoquan and they, you and beat the hell out of them. Yeah. They, they, they did do that. I know they did that. So I, I haven't, I saw guys when they came back out and, you know, they must've fallen down, I guess, you know, as far as I knew it, but, Hey, I wasn't in it, you know, so, uh, but yeah, if you, you assault an officer or something like that, they kind of stuck together then. It jumped on you. You said it was predominantly African-Americans working there. Someone jumps on you. You said earlier, you, you know, not many of them would have your back. Do you think something would have happened to them if, if someone jumped on you? I think so, Chad. I, I was just wondering, uh, and I asked a friend of mine, I said, uh, uh, an African-American guy and, um, uh, I said, you know, Alex, how come I, how come uh, they let me slide? He said, well, probably because um, you were white and they know something would be done about it. But I don't know, Chad. Like I say, I, I, I don't think, I don't know. I don't know if they, I don't know if they'd have had my back. I don't think so. You know, it, it was, you, you know yourself, you know, when they, it's different. You can say you're going to do a lot of things, but I, I, I seen them run. I've seen them run firsthand. So the cops run, run from the prisoners. I've seen them be chased. Yeah. I've seen them be chased. And, you know, they didn't, of course they didn't have guns or anything else like that. Um, you know, so it was, you know, they, I mean, they were scared. They could talk all that gang, you know, that gorilla stuff, but most of them, most of them, I would say were scared. How about the prisoners with you? You know, you're working with these guys, like I said earlier, I mean, you probably won't get many staff to come on a show and, and admit this, but sometimes you build relationships with the guys that work for you, like the guy for six years. You ever feel bad, like, damn, man, this dude deserves probably to get out of here. You ever feel like that inside? Yeah, you know, you you know, you and there were there were uh, there were several Chad. I mean, there were some several uh, skilled guys uh, back there that had been locked up for twenty some years and uh, had worked in the pipe shop or plumbing shop or whatever. And um, they had some, they had some skills. 
They called me, Chad, one day to go over to, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm jumping around, but they called me over to Central, uh, which is where the behind the wall is, and they said, um, we need you to go over there and raise some water lines in the in the cafeteria. I said, okay. So I'm going over there. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know the institution. So I go in there. I look looking around. A little short guy comes up with to me. He says, "Hey, I'll raise some water lines for you for a case of sodas." And I said, "Yeah, sure, okay, that's fine." I said, "Can you know how to do it?" He said, "Yeah." And I'm thinking, "Yeah, you know, Jimmy Jeff Coat." I said, "Okay." So I go in. I I get set up and all of this stuff. And he says, "Um," he says, "So I get up on the ladder." He says, "What are you doing?" I said, I'm getting up here. I'm going to raise these water lines. He says, do we still have a deal? I said, yeah, Chad, I, I'm, I'm on overtime. I, I didn't move. I mean, he did a better job than what I could have done. I mean, him and he had some guy that he was had with him. I don't know if it was his woman. I don't really care. You know, he tra- treated him like a bitch. So I said, well, whatever. But um, hell, he did a hell of a job, hell of a job. And it got me overtime. So uh, that was good. You had, you had some dudes in there. You ever had people try to approach you to bring in contraband? Yeah. Yeah. All that. from day, you know, from, I think after they get the word gets out and you know, it's quicker than email um, that I just, I'm not going for that. You know, don't, don't, you know, I give them phone calls sometimes. Um, you know, um, you know, I did my best. I tried to do my best for them, you know, but I'm not crossing the line and yeah, they bring me in some yeast. Um, you know, your wife's panties, I about blasted on him. Cause I mean that, that you can, don't come at, you know, don't come at me with no bullshit like that. So, you know, they, they, they ask for anything they, you know, um, why don't you bring me in a little cocaine or something, you know? Um, uh, but not, you know, I'm not, I didn't go down that street. Uh, I didn't, I'm not doing nothing like that. Or trying to end up in Lord yourself. <laughs> for real. You know, <laughs> there are a lot of brothers down there, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, you know? Well, uh, we had it. We had there were there were a few white guys. A lot of the white guys uh, stayed in the dorm. I had a, a guy that worked with me that that for some reason it's not my business, but he hired any white guy that he could. So we we had um, he had like three or four white guys uh, working for him. As a matter of fact, on the attempted escape, that was one of the guys within the tunnel because he knew where the tunnel was. So, you know, I, I think him and another inmate, you know, tried to get down there, but I think like, I'm thinking to myself, you know, why are you hiring all these white guys, man? I mean, and a lot of them think, you know, I got you and all that stuff. Cause they're white, you know? And, um, uh, I don't know. I had a couple on my squad at times, but he had damn near had a whole squad and there won't that, I should say there was 2000 inmates. There probably won't 10, 20 maybe white guys in, at Alcacon itself. So, so, you know, eventually Lorton starts to fall apart, right? I mean, you're there when they close it down. You're pretty much your job's over with. What leads up to Lorton really getting closed down? Is it all the escapes, the violence? I mean, what is it? What are they telling the staff members? Are they, hey, man, we're getting ready to close this joker down? That's a good question, Chad. Because we, we had had people coming in. Um, I don't know if it was uh building people or the higher ups and just look at the institution and, and see what kind of shape it's in. The interesting thing is when I went there, Chad, they were those guys were getting like one to three years, uh three to six, uh the most you would get. And then after about 93, just say or 94, these guys were, I mean, and that being said, these guys are doing 10 to 20 years. 20 to 60, that place is not designed for guys, Aquacon especially, for doing 20s to 60 years. It's just not. It, it, you know, you're sleeping in a dorm with a guy doing one to three, and this guy's doing 20 to 60. You know, you, what are you going to say if you said something wrong out of his mouth? You know, he could do nothing but run your time. It just, it wasn't set up. It was, uh, it was dilapidated. It was, uh, it was everything we could do to keep it up. It was old. Um, most of it was steam heat in the dorms. Um, a lot of the dorms were just steam heat. So, you know, it, every time you cut steam off and cut it back on, you're going to have leaks. So um, 
you know, it was just a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work, especially on the steam lines and stuff. Hey, telling you guys that, hey, this place is closing down. Are you thinking, damn, I'm about to lose my job? Yeah, I actually, um, I actually went up and said, you know, I asked them point blank. I said, am, am I safe? And the only place to go would be up to jail. And I didn't want to go up to jail anyway. I mean, you, that's I've, I was up there about two weeks, and that's the last place you want to go. So I just said, well, what, what's going to happen? He said, you're going to get the furlough package. So once that happened, I started, you know, found, fortunately found another job. The furlough package? No, I found a job before, right before they they uh, the fur they furloughed me. So I'm, I'm glad I kind of started looking because I thought, well, I'm just going to enjoy the six months or whatever it was. But I found a great job and they took my, like I say, took my DC, my uh, time. So that was good. I'm really blessed in that, in that sense. Yeah. You ever walk, you ever walk into work and be like, damn, I can't believe these dudes are living in a place like this. Oh my God, man. Uh, it's, it, it was, I mean, it's, it's funky like a monkey. I, I it, It's nasty, especially up the jail. I did two weeks up the jail and I said, look, told my supervisor, I said, um, I'm not going back up there. So if, whatever you think you have to do, um, do it because I'm not going back up there. Stank, uh, everything. Oh my God. Don't want to open the gate for you. Um, it's just, I couldn't do it. I just said, I'm not doing this no more. I, you know, I'm done. So, you know, I kind of had a report, Occoquan, and you know, like I say, I was behind the wall for a year. I was at youth center for a year and a half. Um, so, you know, I can't, guys, they kind of got used to me and stuff and they didn't know me up there. So I, I just, you know, you're trying to drain down a, a riser and you have to go down below to open up the faucets or whatever. They don't want to open the gate for you. I'm tired today and all this. I said, no, nah, I'm not doing this. I'm just not doing it. I got to get out of here. So I'm glad. I think probably my worst, the worst time there, Chad, was the youth center. I think the youth center was probably my worst time uh, at the Department of Corrections because those youngins, you know, they just didn't have a bit. They just, you know, they're wilding out, you know, and um, that was probably, that was, that was a tough time. You know, that was. Talk kinda, about it. You say it was a tough time. What do you remember from back then from the youth? What were they doing? Well, they, I mean, they fight, they were fighting. Um, they, they just doing stupid shit, you know, just doing a bunch. I'm trying to think, just doing a bunch of stupid stuff. Um, you know, they'd light the dorm on fire. They would, uh, it, it was just always something. They'd break a toilet, um, pull a line off, uh, a water line, just do some crazy, crazy stuff. Um, I got called in there one night. On, I got a, a lot of overtime there, by the way. But I got called in and I dorm didn't have no heat. So, And this doesn't have to do, but this is kind of crazy. So they had a man there with breasts. And what he had did is he put a sheet on himself and wrapped the sheet around. And he was right in front of the dorm. And, man, I'm going to tell you what, these dudes were going crazy, man. I couldn't get in the dorm. I walked up to – I could have, but I wasn't getting in the, mess, in the middle of that mess. You know what I'm saying? Because they were driving – I mean, ain't nothing against them, but I'm just saying these dudes were going crazy with this thing. So I said, um, you know, I just called back. I called the control. I said, look, I'm, I'm not – I can't make it in there, man. I, I'm, not, I'm not going through that mess. I was 30 guys out there all with this dude. So I'm saying, oh, no, nah, I'm not getting in that. I'm not going to shot block him if that's what they're trying to do, you know. Um, but yeah, they, they just, they, 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 they're always yelling and, and didn't know how to just, like I say, just didn't know how to do time. Just didn't know, would drive you crazy. Just drive you freaking nuts. Um, I know you've seen the video I did with fly, right. And, and you had reached out to me. Do you remember fly? Do you remember hearing about him? I do. I remember when the, some of that stuff went down. Um, like I say, I, I think it was like 93. Um, and did I know him? No, but I know that I heard about, you know, what went on and he had I, something about, and I'm not trying to talk behind the brother cause I don't know him, but some, some officers got pregnant and this, that, and the third, again, I, I don't know if it's true or not, but I did hear stuff like that. Um, when you hear that officers are getting pregnant, what are you thinking in your head? Um, they, it didn't, frankly, it didn't surprise me. I'm like, you know, cause, uh, 
you know, not not all of those women were uh, real attractive. So some of them, I think, that were there trying to, uh, you know, trying maybe trying to find a man. I don't know, but um, didn't surprise me. You know, that didn't surprise me. I'm just like, good God, you know, um, kind of makes you wonder whose side they're on, though. You know, they're they're sleeping with inmates and stuff. So when you say they're sleeping with inmates, you're like, yeah, they definitely ain't gonna help you if something happens and you're beefing uh, with your baby daddy, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I went over, I guess, a couple, some more stories. Um, so during that time, I went over to Central Facility, Chad. Um, it was overtime, you know, when I, when I was doing this. I put a couple vowels into, and they said, um, the one inmate pulled me up. I don't know him from Adam. I don't even know who he is. He said, and there was an office there. He said, that guy's an FBI agent. I said, oh, okay, but well, all right, thanks. You know, I guess, thanks. Well, the guy that was the acting supervisor over there had 19 years in. And what he was doing, because he'd catch me every morning. Hey, uh, how you doing? Uh, what kind of time? To, uh, what, how much time did you get last night? What he was doing was padding the books. And so I guess they must have gigged him for that. Because I kept wondering, I'm like, why the fuck? Why do you keep asking me how much time I get over time? Don't worry about me. I, I'm all right, you know. And he's uh he was padding the uh padding the books so the uh he had 19 years and you could retire out at 20, and um so he missed his retirement and everything. Um had another guy, my supervisor's son-in-law. He was over. He was at Central Facility. He um. He was bringing in little weed and stuff to a few of the inmates. This is what they're telling me. And so he told the inmates that he was giving it to. He said, I'm not, I'm not bringing it in anymore. So they had him outside, and there was a limo that was outside the gate, which were agents. But he didn't know it. He said, well, the inmate told him, said, if you quit bringing stuff in, you see that limo out there? Um, they, they, they got you. So he kept bringing stuff in, and he, uh, he ended up losing his job you know, behind that, uh, just, just crazy stuff, man. Just crazy. I, I couldn't, I could, I just couldn't believe it. You know, I mean, this is the reality of prison, right? I mean, there's always hey, man, there's always one, at least one staff member on every compound that's doing something, brother. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we was, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a, uh, a guy that I worked with and he was, he was a good guy. He was an alcoholic, but he was a good guy. But he, he had worked for the department for probably, he had retired or was getting ready to retire. And I literally had to take him down to the store. We had a little country store and get him a beer every, well, not every morning. That'd be a lie, but he'd be coming in, Chad. He'd be shaking so bad, but he's seen a lot of shit. You know, there was a, there was a ride at Central. I think he was there. Um, there was a ride in 86. I just missed a ride at Occoquan. Because I went there in '88, he was there for that. He was the pipe fitter that was that was on the um, compound per se. He rent he you, they let him have a house for cheap, and he would be the go to guy. Now a lot of times he didn't answer his phone, and I'd go in, but still. But I mean, he would shake so bad, I felt bad for him. Um, he he had a he had a bad problem, but you know, again, you could see it on his face. He would he just you know, like I guess. The, the convicts go through it, you know, it does a lot to you, you know, it, it affects you too. Cause you know, you, you go home and, and actually my wife said, um, did you, did you turn black or something? Cause she'd hear me talking on the phone. I swear she said, and you, you know, I don't realize it. I don't realize what the hell I'm saying. She says, you talk just like them down there. And I did, like I say, Chad, I didn't realize it, but you know, you're there every single day eight, 10 hours a day. It's almost like you just can't help it. You just, it just comes natural, you know? Well, you knew, you knew we were doing an interview tonight. Did you wear the Jimi Hendrix shirt? Because we were going to be talking about DC dudes. Yeah. I'm scared. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be a hundred. I'm going to be a hundred. No, no. I like Jimi Hendrix though. You know, used to get high to Jimi Hendrix, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, I, I figured they, you know, they might like it, you know, no, I'm not a racist or, and I never portrayed that, you know, there either. So, you know, I'm not a racist dude anyway. So um, a lot of white dudes ain't going to make it at Lorton, right? You made it 10 years, even though you weren't a prisoner. Yeah. That, what, what was that again? I'm sorry. 
a lot of white dudes probably didn't make it down in Lorton, but you know, you weren't a prisoner, but you made it 10 years. Yeah. 10, yeah, about 10 and a half. And, and, um, I, I just, and when I went to another job, you know, you, you, you end up taking that same mentality, like, wait a minute, what'd you just say? And, you know, somebody talk out of the way, out of their mouth. And I'm like, what the, what the F did he just say to me? Or something like that. I had to bring all that back, you know, because, you know, you just got out here. You got to let the stuff go. You can't, you know, but in there, you know, you're not going to be called no bitch or no nothing like that. You know, you, you just can't, you know, you just, you know that you, you know, you can't let that shit fly. Let me ask you this, right? When you do finally leave Lorton, do you ever miss it? Do you miss that, you know, that life and the, ah, the ah. even though at times you probably felt like you didn't want to be there and you were nervous, did you miss it? That's a, that's a good question too, Chad. I, you know what? I, I really do. I, I, I don't know if it was, uh, if it was like, you know, tense all day and, and, and you, you, you know, you didn't know how to relax or I'm not sure what it is. Truthfully, I miss a lot of the guys. I mean, because I mean, they, you know, like you say, I mean, most of them I had a good rapport with. I mean, and some of them, I actually ran into one that's out there doing it for himself now that worked for me. So, you know, that, that kind of makes me feel, I'm not patting myself or nothing, but that, that kind of made me feel good about myself. You know, of course I asked him, I said, uh, what do you got for the head, bro? You know, so he, man, he said, you can't let that shit go. Can you, you know, but, uh, just fucking with him, but mess, excuse me, messing with him. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was good to see, but yeah, I do Chad. I do sometimes. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I, I do miss it some crazy because sometimes prisoners say that they miss prison right um and and sometimes i say that you know we take a lot of stuff after you've been there you bring a lot of that stuff with you out here on the street it's part of your life man you spent many many years there and um i don't ever want to say that i miss prison um i miss some of the dudes that i've been around i got a real good friend that just did 20 he's gonna get out in april i'm gonna go help him out when he gets out but it's crazy that you could miss that environment miss the the dangerousness or you know, because you become, this is it. This You become accustomed to it. It's just normal. And, you know, you're not afraid no more. And, and you're like, hey, this is it. I'm here. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we we went, Chad, I, 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 had, gone, I had been at the jail a couple of years. And my wife told me, said, you know, we've got some neighbors that the wives are going out and said, why don't you go out with the husbands? Well, I don't know these cats, man. I'm thinking, what the hell? So one's a colonel. And he says, um, Look, where do you, where do you guys want to go? I don't know what he's going to say. Well, he wants to go to Good Guys. It's a it's a it's a strip joint at Upper Wisconsin Avenue. I said, you know, I'm game. You know, if that's what you want to do. So anyway, we have a blast. We get out, and two brothers are outside, and I you know I had a few beers in me, and he said, the mom said, hey, uh, give me a dollar. I said, I, yeah, I ain't got no dollar, pal. And then he said, no, no. I said, give me or some such shit. Give me a dollar. I said, look. I ain't got a fucking thing for you. You know, you ain't get nothing. Don't ask me for nothing. Well, in the meantime, these three guys that I'm with, they're down the road. They, they, they hauled ass. They had my back real good. They were all, but you know, that's not me. That, but that mentality, now, you, what do you think? You're going to come up and take my cigarette, give them, take my money. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's, that's where I changed, you know, and that's what I had to change back to not doing that, you know, just letting it go. You know, just letting it go. But um, that's what that a lot of that. I mean, those guys taught me a lot of stuff. Like I say, I can I can I can perceive when something's going to happen. And like you said, you you, I can feel it. I, I just feel the tension. I know, you know, that something's wrong. And, and um, you know, they didn't think so. But I learned a lot of stuff from those guys. I learned I learned a lot of stuff, how to treat people, um, which I didn't treat them bad anyway. But I. I you know, they taught, they taught me a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. No matter what side you're on, you learn people, you learn the environment, right? And and I, I'm the same way now. And I'm, you know, exactly what you talk about. Like, I can, I can feel things, you know, we, we might be in a restaurant and I see something and, and I'm like, damn, something's going on. And then dude starts arguing with the people and you're, it's just that intuition that you get. It's that prison intuition. I don't know what else to call it. It's just, you, you have it, right? Exactly. Exactly. And, and, you know, it's still. You know, and again, I'm I'm not one. I'm not gonna. You know, that we were in a restaurant, and um, 
I could see this guy getting heated. This guy come in, this big old, big old black guy. And I was with a friend of mine and he said, uh, his black dude too. And he said, um, you know, he looked at me, said, man, don't go, don't go up there and get involved. Cause I'm, try, I'm trying to save the little guy. The guy's getting ready to get his ass whipped. And, um, but my, my first intuition was to, nah, I got, I mean, I want to stop this, you know, but he said, man, don't, don't get involved. You know, you, I don't know, just wanted to help the guy, I guess, you know. It is what it is, man. Are you glad you left there, though, and able to put some of that stuff behind you? Yeah, yeah, I really am. I mean, I've, I've truly been blessed. Um, you know, I wouldn't have got that job, the, the job that I retired from, had I not worked there. Because I, I understand now I, I, why God put me in that position, because, uh, you know, that that stuff, that kitty stuff that they were doing, I, I, I went to work for the Federal Reserve and retired on um, that, that kitty stuff. I mean, there was a lot of, I would have liked to had a lot of those guys that those tough guys that were there just to walk down the block at night. I mean, you walk in a dorm there, like I say, 160 screaming guys. And what they used to tell me, which I just let them slide. If you let that cracker go, he'll get you heat or hot water. And that was pretty much the truth. I mean, I, I'm not patting myself on the back, but I, I would, um, I, you know, I, I was a pretty good fitter and a pretty good plumber. So, you know, I, I'm going to get them what they asked for. So I just can't picture uh, these guys going, I, you know, I'd, I'd love to take them in there one day. And I just wink at a couple of guys and say, you know, scare them, you know, or something like that. Cause uh, they wouldn't make it. They wouldn't make it, but you know, that would, that would have been good. Listen, man, I definitely appreciate you coming on and talking. It's good to get different perspectives and what it's really like, you know, and, for, for people on that side, and, and Lorton was a dangerous place. You made it. But anyway, Kevin, man, I appreciate you coming on. Anything you want to say before we get ready to go? No, Chad. Um, I watch your show all the time. Um, I think you're a solid guy. Uh, just keep doing what you're doing because you're doing a good job. And you need to. I need to get your cash app, too. And, uh, you know, because I, I like to, you know, throw your bone or something. You know what I mean? It's all good. I appreciate you. Listen, man, nothing you got to say to fly, huh? You ain't got no message for fly? Fly, keep banging, brother. You know what I mean? Keep banging. I, I don't know. You know, I. he seemed like he's doing okay, though, right? I think he is doing okay after 50 years in prison. He's. I, I talk to him periodically. But, yeah, man, again, Kevin, appreciate you coming on. With respect, Blood on the Razor Wire TV. Until tomorrow, we're out. 